No, nah, but mate, as I said to you, like social media is fucked in. Like, I, I think once you write it and then it's there, you're fucked. That's my yeah, take. Yeah, he's done. He's gone. Anyway, anyway. Won't talk about that. Intro. Welcome back to the Social Distance Podcast, everybody. Uh, good show, actually. We start to talk about George's inclusion. Well, we sift through a lot of bullshit at this for the first eight or nine minutes, so just persevere with us. Uh, we invite George to the team, and then we go podcast fishing, and George um, Jonesy brings on Daryl Impey, and we talk about him leaving the team, join George leaving the team, Daryl's last race. It's a good show. You'll like it. Like, share, subscribe. Let's, let's just run the intro and wing it like we always do and see what comes out of it. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Kick. Just getting pulled in the hospital chat. My radar's going pretty hard at the moment. I think we should. Will you shut up, up man? That escalated quickly. Oh, We're going to need to get some more qualified guests on the show, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I went to the All Blacks game the other day. Got a ball. Did you? Yeah. Was that the one I, they choked and you, lost? No. No, didn't go to that one. I don't even watch. I don't even. Has that game even happened? Do you know I, what um, I'm finding is a real hard sell on rugby at the moment? Because I'm like, it's like, I've, it's a game I've grown up with, played my whole life when I was young, loved everything. And then, like, I had a friend who was in France at the World Cup, at the at the mountain bike World Cup, and he sat down with a bunch of Frenchies and um, he watched the game where the All Blacks lost. And obviously, he was, was a Dutch guy. And he was, like, obviously supporting the All Blacks. And at the end of this, he's like, also... It's a shit game. It's such a shit sport. And it's like, he, when, if you just watch that game in isolation, he's got a point. Rugby at the moment, I just feel like World Cup rugby. And this, it's just like they've just managed to suck the life out of what, it. Why is it shit? Too many. Because you're not allowed to do heads anymore. You're not allowed to bash each <laughs> you other can't up. cut people in half. <laughs> yeah, you can't cut people in half like you used to be able to back in the day. The that, days that, are gone that, of like just dropping the shoulder. I mean, Granted, it's probably the right thing to do to protect people's health and well-being, but it's like oh, of course it the, the law is so like when you take away okay, there's this mitigation thing, but ultimately, if you in any way, shape, or form, even if there's mitigation, like even if the player's falling over and you're like going to tackle his legs and he falls into your mm. his head falls into your like arms, you cut it, you're gone. So it's like it's a crazy situation it's, it's, though. The whole like HIA, I mean, they have it in league as well. You have this. Head injury. I mean, we, we see it in cycling. We remember Noxie getting the old HIA, being five minutes out the ass, motor pacing, motor pacing back into the bunch, and then they disqualified him. So it's like, yeah, that's right. It doesn't really work in cycling, but um, <laughs> it made me think about what we used to do in school when I when I was watching because I started. I've been watching a lot of rugby league at the moment too, and um, we used to play this game called bunt and spear. So bunt and there were two spear. Games we played. Yeah. So. What you'd do is you would have two teams, you split into two sides, play in at like recess or morning tea, we called it. You play on the concrete court and out in, in lunchtime, you play on the grass field. And you'd kick a high ball up as high as you can. And you had to just take the high ball while you had guys just running at you. Oh. And they were just <laughs> on so concrete. Would, basically, you'd be so exposed and you would just get spear tackled like they just slice you in half but if you caught the ball and if they kicked it too far and you caught it you were obligated to run it straight at the person and try and like bunt them off and right. you weren't allowed to sidestep you weren't allowed to do anything like this and the variation of this we would sometimes add a frisbee so someone would kick the high ball and they would be like looking up trying to take the high ball and then someone would send a frisbee in at head height and then often yes. what would happen is you've got one eye on the high ball one eye on the frisbee and you fuck them both up. You take the frisbee on the nose and the and, and the and the rugby ball to the dome. Yeah, so George, you're never going to enjoy rugby, mate. If that's what your mm. bar is of entertainment, I, just I gotta split say, like, in half on concrete. Like the, there's some certain parts of the game that are a bit frustrating to watch, but like ultimately, I'm in, I'm really enjoying the World Cup. I think I've I've watched almost every game, and I'm enjoying the competition because. The reason I'm enjoying the competition is because the the smaller nations that typically would get fucking hammered, which they yeah. still exist, those teams. But some of the smaller nations, for example, Fiji, mm. like they they've all mm. stepped up such a level. And uh, some of the some of the bigger nations, for example, Australia, are actually quite shit. 
And they, Why is that? Like you, it creates like a – it's actually cool competition to watch because there's quite a lot at play in the pool play. Like there's some really good teams that could go out quite early. Like there's a mm. potential Australia won't make it out of the pool Here, play. Here's one for you, Jones. Here's one that – so someone said to me the other day, uh, I think they were talking about Ireland, and they said oh, they, they peaked too soon. That they hit their peak, they are peaking too soon, and it, it actually just pissed me off. It's like, what do you like? This rugby is not a sport where you peak. It's not like endurance sports. So in non-endurance sports, the whole concept of peaking early is like the most frustrating concept in the world. Like, mm. yeah, sure, these guys are fit, whatever, but like in endurance sports, you peak too soon, you then blow up massively, and it's like it's at a biological, it's at a cellular level. You know, the you there's your body can't make the adaptions at the rate of the stimulus is coming in and, and you just basically get in a hole and you can maintain the level for a while, but then, you know, you're so skinny for a long time, your hormones blow up. All the, You know, there's, there's this whole cliff you fall off when you peak too soon. But in rugby, it's like, or in, in non-endurance sports, cricket, let's say, peaking too soon in cricket, what the fuck is that? You know, you yeah. don't suddenly know how to catch, forget how to catch because you, you've been yeah. catching too much and then you're like, oh, I've done too much and I've peaked too soon. I, I agree with you. Like, and actually, it's not like I'm less of like, what the fuck are they talking about? I'm actually more of like, I actually don't know what they mean by it. And I'd love to, I'd love for someone who does know the game, who know, who does know rugby, like ins and outs, like to explain to me, like, what is it, what do they mean by a peak in rugby? Because, yeah, like George says, a physical peak in cycling is, is completely different mm. because, you it's know, so if you don't miserable. ride your bike, if you don't yeah, ride your bike for three I weeks, I think it you means do. their necks are too mm. skinny. You've only got like a month period where your neck is at maximum width and girth. <laughs> mm. That's what they mean. Must be that, yeah. yeah. I, I'd, like, I'd actually like to hear from somebody who knows rugby to to like or any to, any to be, non-endurance sport, no non-motor based sport, mm. like hu- human motor based. You know, and just I, I, I'm sure the peak exists in those sports. I'd just like to know what it what it means, what it is. What I it think is. it's mental. I just think it's like how long can these boys go without like it's like on NRL, right? So people that don't know, rug, rugby league is massive in Australia, and there's this thing called Mad Monday, and yeah. it's basically when the top eight's decided, and then there's a bunch of teams that are not going to play the final, and every year Mad Monday like throws up some absolute gems. Like, yeah. remember the remember the guy doing a bubbler? Like it was like always just real rogue stuff that yeah. will come out of rugby league. You know, ma- mainly these guys getting caught with like cocaine and photos of them sort of pissing in their mouths and all sorts of debauchery. <laughs> and like, I feel like that is, that's not even a joke either. Like, it's actually- no, that's not no, a joke. No, no, I mean, no, that's, that's genuinely actually happened. happened. <laughs> Look it up. Yeah. Um, and but even that, like, I, I hang on, like just on that, whenever you hear those stories, I always go like, what group of circles is that entertainment though? Because it actually gives blokes as a whole a bad name where so many women jump on the back of that and they go, is that what you blokes do? Is that what you do <laughs> for laughs? You piss in each other's mouths and you're like, hang on a minute. That, I don't know anyone that does that for entertainment. Like, that I, I could have 10 palanas, like pints, and never my brain goes, hey, boys, I've got an icebreaker. Yeah, but I I feel like something happens when you have a squad of forty guys and you're in a lock in. But it's something like about it, rugby league. That's like yeah, it's something su- specifically it's rugby league. Mm. <laughs> you know what, um, something crook. <laughs> maybe maybe the peak maybe the peak in rugby is like when you it takes time to develop set pieces, certain plays, a certain skill level, and like it. it, it like they, let's say they just start developing a set piece off the back of the scrum, like a set play off the back of the scrum, and it takes them time to refine that and get it like running. Yeah, but smoothly. how do you blow up? How do you go past it? You know what I mean? I understand the the yeah, time, to, it, yeah. time to master. You know the time yeah. to to develop True. the skill. But then at what point do you you don't fall off the you don't the peak a peak infers that there's a, a downward side of the peak as well. You know there's a there's the upward up to the climb up, and then the peak infers that at some point you fall off, which we we peak too soon all the time. I'm I'm specialist at peaking too early, <laughs> blowing up halfway through a grand tour, you know, and and like I just it's such a foreign concept. And the only thing I can yeah. think of is like I was saying with this Mad Monday stuff is basically it's when you can no longer resist the urge to piss in your mouth. 
or whatever these guys yeah, yeah. are yeah, up yeah. to at rugby on yeah, Monday, yeah. Mad Monday. You know what I mean? Just mentally, they just can't not lock it down for. Yeah, but I I also don't understand that really either. You know. Well, you you're talking before about like rugby losing, you know, the, the fucking big tackles and all that. Every time they talk about a sport sanitizing, you always got to tip your cap to ice hockey and how they've yeah. always maintained a level of. This is what we do. We drop gloves, mm. kick the shit out of each other, and we wait and literally till someone hits the deck, and then we break it up. Mm. But I think it's easy because they've got helmets on. I mean, you could punch someone as hard as you can in the head. No, they take, they, them off. they take them off, mate. They take them off. They take their gloves oh. and helmets off and just punch on. <laughs> and pull the jumper <laughs> over them and then just like lay in. <laughs> and the crowd is going nuts. Well, they're not, and, and they haven't changed. Have they sanitized ice hockey? I don't know. What was oh, the story bit. about this bloke? Um, it might have been in field hockey, even, or, or maybe it was ice hockey. And I think it was, it was a big story. He got, he might have even gone to prison where he actually smacked the guy with a stick and got done for assault. Do you remember this? Uh, it was, re- it was only within the last few years. I don't think you can get right. done for assault in ice hockey because it's part of the game. They're like, they literally no, no, have players you, called the a stick so that it comes on. And, yeah, yeah well, if you intentionally down. stick someone and smack them over the head. Surely. Mm. Imagine being the enforcer in ice hockey. That's yeah. a grim job. You don't even play the sport. You just come in and beat people up. Got well, that's no why that, yeah. that doco, that's why I always love watching the ESPN 30 for 30s or whatever about sports that I just don't watch because they always give you this insight like when they did that one on Wayne Gretzky mm. and how he just, yeah, as you said, he'd have three enforcers on his team because he's a gun. They all want to fucking target him. But then you get the Wait, shit. Wait, sorry, who's Wayne of- Gretzky? I'm, I'm not familiar. He's the ah. greatest ice hockey player of all time. Really? Yeah. She said, there you go. Nothing about the sport. Okay. Well, so Gretzky he, he, was like a gun Edmonton, and he was playing man. Edmonton. And he and Edmonton got this massive offer for the best player in ice hockey to come across to play in LA. And Edmonton were like, oh, it's a lot of cash. Fuck it. We'll do the deal. They mm, did the we're trade. Great. They were never that good again. And LA went on to win a couple of Stanley Cups or whatever. But it was all about, yeah, like those enforcer fucking meat axes that, as I said, mm. tip your cap. And speaking of sports, big announcement, obviously, a week ago that you were signed with Israel. What do you reckon of the backdrop, lad? I, I love how, like, we did this announcement, called announcement in collaboration with Israel, Israel Premier Tech on their social medias. Like, they had the cool idea of, like, let's combine social distance podcasts with announcing George coming to the team. We do it. We do this cool announcement. It goes big. And then we say, tune in next week when we discuss it. We're now 12 minutes into the show. We're talking about how do you rugby. peak in rugby? <laughs> That's it in people's mouths and yeah, all the, and trading, all the, the gra- trading the greatest ice hockey player of all time from Edmonton to LA. And George is going, I don't know who Wayne Gretzky is. <laughs> like, never heard of him. <laughs> oh, I, I'm just name, noticing but... then, Daryl Limpy's eyes, I mean, obviously, if you listen to this, it doesn't mean shit, but if you're watching on YouTube, he's got like the creep eyes above <laughs> you George's can see him through the gap. <laughs> you see him through I the gap. I feel like we should change that background because that's that photo is the 2023 uh, okay. Tour Down Under team. Is it? And I just feel like we don't really need to drag those faces how, and names. I won't say the, the names. How did the team go? How the team go that Tour Down Under? All right. Uh, cool. Yeah, we don't need them to be attached to this drill. Yeah, we don't need to attach them like okay. involuntarily to the show, you know? All right. Let's, yeah. let's flick it so back. That was to Simon the Clark, Daryl Impey, Corbin Strong. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, lads. Um, I saw I saw the video of Daryl's last race, emotional, crossing yeah. the line there with Clarky. Do you know yeah. it was um really a sweet moment? Oh, right. we were watching it. <laughs> we were watching it up at um up at Daryl's wife's with his Daryl's wife and kids, Ellie and the and the boys. And there was quite a few of us went up there to watch his last race, his last moment. Yep. And there was a moment when Daryl like crossed the line and we were all watching it and it's you know it's pretty emotional. I was you know, I see Daryl starts crying, I'm like, oh fuck, it's, you know, a little bit it gets you, you know. It's and okay. then I look down at his George? son. I get I look down at um his middle son, and his middle son just goes, Yay! Now daddy's at home every day. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> oh god, yeah. play the heartstrings, you know? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, that was good to watch. We should have got him on the show, actually. Maybe we can get him on the show in a couple of weeks to talk about it. Well, what's mm. he doing now? Do you want me to go podcast fishing? No, let's talk about George. <laughs> yeah. 
Let's talk about yeah, George okay. joining the team. Daryl's leaving. George is joining. So we'll talk about the incoming. And then uh, in the next two weeks' time. What about the net loss for Israel Primatech? Yeah. We'll oh, we'll yeah. Daryl straight swap. We should mm. get um, people to comment like, you know, is it a great swap, Daryl, for George? Yeah, let's run through that. Okay, so <clears throat> straight. Let's let's call it a straight swap, which it's not. But let's say from a personality side of things, who comes out on top? From a physical side of things, who comes out on top? And yep. from a let's say like purely like a results based, who comes out on top? Given mm. in, in the current states, so not current Darryl states, MP, not yeah, not Darryl Darryl from. Not Daryl Limpy 10 years ago, not George Bennett 10 years ago, like Daryl Limpy, George Bennett 2024. Well, you're, you're okay. You're up. You're upgrading your, hopefully, upgrading UCI points. Yeah. Well, you got 12 this year, I think, Daryl. So, <laughs> yeah. I hope so. So, we <laughs> have given a rough goal of 1,000. So, let's <laughs> say we're, we're upgrading yeah, UCI so points. So, that's the point in George's court. This, how how many like, points you got in the kit bag? Uh, heaps mate yeah but, right, so but, that, but that but then I'd say so then like we moved the points thing across to the physical side of the physical category I would say the fact that Daryl scored 12 points is because that's an indication of the way he shifted his role in his last year of his career selflessness it was yeah. selflessness it wasn't about you see I might I might results. win I might win 800 points but I've taken away 400 from teammates because I've just gone rogue Knocked is that what you're inferring yeah, yeah. So Daryl, Daryl is so from a physical side, I'd say Daryl compared to you at the moment, um, I guess completely different riders. So you can't really compare it. Do you think that they'll go into this with like assists? Do you think this will become a you know how like a money from a money ball mm. point of view? Do you think there will be like an a an assist kind of stat that comes through? Because like I in some one contract I was looking at for next year, um before I signed with Israel was a folk was focused, was helping a, a GC guy. And one of the bonuses we said, okay, well, if my sole role was to follow this bloke around and help him, one of the things we wanted was a teammate bonus. So when he wins and I'm there, I get the bonus. That's, that's, and, that's a great idea. Yeah. But they, it, it, it's very hard to get across the line. It doesn't. It's it's something that's very rare. But I think that it would be a great step to encourage. Like we always had them in Green bonus. Edge. Teammate bonus. Yeah, early Green Edge had it. No, yeah. mate. They 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 should bring back. You know the bus driver Lewis Murray mm. at Green Edge. Did you ever hear the story about him when he was riding for was it Seiko with Steve O? Onsay. Onsay. Did you hear that story, George? No. And he was <laughs> the start of the Tour de France. And literally the morning of the start of the tour, one of the riders binned it and couldn't start. And they rang around all the different riders on the squad. And Lewis Murray was the closest guy who'd been on the cans and, you know, he was in shit physical condition. And they said, mate, we've just got to get here. We've just got to start. So they got him to the tour. First day was a team time trial and he missed time cut. <laughs> but <laughs> he got piped out the ass in the first K. But the rule back then was if you start, you got equal top of the prize money. Oh, yeah. For the whole Tour and de France. For the whole Tour de France. <laughs> so you got oh. missed time cutting the team time trial. But the chop back then was 60,000 euro a rider because they won all these jerseys, stages, mountains, jersey, whatever. And he used that 60,000 euro. I think he retired, what, two years later or a year later to buy a shop and set his family up. Wow. Because we do it now, I think standard practices now, total prize money divided by the riders times the days you raced of the Grand Tour. Oh, so if you go home really? on stage 10, you get, ah. you know, 50% of of the total prize money, your share of the total prize money, and the rest goes back into the kitty. Huh. Do you think that that's fair enough, or do you reckon it should just be you start, you you get it? Well, the I mean, it depends how you go out. If you're just crazy, well, you got then, COVID at the tour last. When I got year, COVID, that see, bullshit. that was one, and then we went on, and I was like, mm, "This seems, you, you know, like." Shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I think it is kind of fair though, because like, I mean, the problem it depends, is it depends what impact you had on the race. Like, if you were only there yeah. for a week, but that one, like stage seven, and you got sick, you got legitimately sick, you couldn't continue to race. But on that stage seven, you played a role that was so important to 
Pogacar or whoever winning the Tour de France, mm. then you'd kind of be like, well, without that day, without what I did that day, maybe it wouldn't have happened. So yeah, it's it, it has to be a bit of a gentleman's agreement, I reckon. We had this situation than... in the Vuelta when Primoz decided to put a rain jacket on on the top of this rainy downhill. And it was in like the, I think it was in the, um, it was in the COVID year. So it was late November, freezing, freezing cold. And like downhill to this valley and then finish, I think it was in like Formigal or something like this. And Primoz was like, oh, it's so cold. I need to put a rain jacket on. And I was like, rain jacket on. Couldn't do it up, but they were going full gas down the hill, pissing with rain. The peloton was blowing up. And he he just is like pretty chill, you know. And he's like, uh, no, no, they won't attack me. We get to the bottom of the hill with the pelotons in like 40 bits and me and Sepp are in the front. And then it's like me and Sepp were both top 10 or seven. I think we were like six and seven on GC or something. And we both went, oh, fuck, you know. And that was the day where we both had to sit up, go back, get them, and we lost our GC completely. But, you know, whatever. We knew we were helpers. It wasn't a big problem. Yeah. But there almost needs to be a way where, like, like Sep completely took himself out of GC that day. Took himself by, like, 20 minutes out of GC. He's not and a I, GC rider. Nah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and then, uh, but I wonder, like, that one act, right, that one moment, mm. If no matter what happened after that, you should be getting because without that we lost the welter one hundred percent. That one five minute passage of play, that is when you were, we would have lost the welter completely. Yes, Absolutely. or yes, we were losing. So I wonder, like, that should hold more thing? weight. Should more weight. Can you wait these moments? Can you, you have to? Uh, but I guess at the end, the one thing I do think about is cycle. Cycling's not like other sports like golf where these guys live off prize money. It's like it's a it's just a bonus. You know what I mean? It's like. Yeah, but surely the leader could the leader yeah. could step in in the situation and be like, okay, that guy, that rider went home on stage seven because he was sick, but he was influential throughout those seven days. He's getting his full cut. I, mm. I, I think the principle of it is more valuable for the team chemistry and the like. A, a rider's if it's just a bonus, are, are they going to crack it if they go? Well, why are we giving such and such more of a chop? And he was at, if it's a bonus to prevent mm. people getting when, their nose out of joint, wouldn't you just go, fuck it? You start, mm. you're in. I was thinking about this this morning. I read that like Jumbo Visma took home like a third of the total prize money from the Vuelta. But then I was like, well, normally the leaders don't take a cut of the prize money. Mm. But on Jumbo, there was three leaders. So there was five guys taking, that's probably per rider, the biggest haul of prize money ever. Because That's the three other guys wouldn't have taken a, wouldn't have taken a cut. Yeah. So so who was the least? You can say who did it now, the worst job? Head. Who did the worst job? Who's going to get maximum cash hole if it's an equal chop? And Yumbo. Yeah. I don't know. Roglic. Problem is those five riders. <laughs> the other five riders are all pretty good riders. <laughs> Well, that's Go on, it. yeah. Why don't you name name one? Name the worst one now. Well, I barely watch it for a while, so I can't comment. I wouldn't well, even know half the squad. Yeah. yeah. Um, so then the Kate. third category was personality. So it's oh, yeah. I'd say it's one. I'd say it's what I'd say oh, it's one for like one and a half. One and a half points in George's favor and half a point in Daryl's favor because I think the physical side you can't really separate it because it's just different. So they mm. just give you half a point each. Split the point. You yeah. take one for the potentially getting more than twelve points next year, and then um, the third one is personality. And again, uh, you can't split it. You can't. It's a tough split. Or it's no, hang on, one. hang on. This I'd, is interesting. I'd argue very this is interesting. Similar. I'd ask you. Oh, Daryl, nah, Daryl was obviously doing a lot of social media content, selling his um, South African kit. Yeah, that kind uh, of knocks him down a bit, doesn't it? Knocks you down a bit. I think. <laughs> I think Yo, he's I'm just sort punishing of punishing content. He, he sort of out. used the team as a way to cash in. Whereas George does not like social media. He doesn't like fans. He doesn't like people. I like mm. that. He he's not about the George's unapproachability. Yeah, I like that. He's just like, a yeah. He, he grumpy out, old he man out, the, on the Muppet Show. You know those two grumpy blokes in yeah. the in the stand. He set out three or four podcasts because he just didn't want to do just it. Just didn't want to borrow it. 
And like, I like that. I respect don't, that. Don't fucking bother me with your WhatsApp messages about times. Here's a time. Yeah. Fucking never. Yeah. I'm not coming on. <laughs> I'll give you a time. <laughs> never. <laughs> yeah. See that laugh you got out of George then? It's like, oh, fuck, he knows me well. <laughs> I know the whole time I was just thinking, we know the, the, those episodes, I didn't want to do it. That I, I was trying to think of an excuse and I just didn't even have one. I just said I don't nah, want to do it. <laughs> you just stopped replying. And me and, me and Bill's are ringing each other and I go, how's George going? And he goes, yeah, I reckon he's over the potty, eh? <laughs> no shit. Let's, let's put this horse out in the paddock. <laughs> And let's hope that he returns home. He's like a, a, a dog in Delhi in the 2008 Com Games. Yeah. Hopefully, he finally runs home. Um. So yeah, I That's almost, a real niche almost, reference. You almost get the Delhi. personality point to George, but I, I I think like you know, joking aside, very similar personalities, both quite outspoken quite opinionated mm. quite strong-minded mm. oh yeah both yeah yeah both essentially fuckheads so so we'll <laughs> we'll call it a good we'll call it, <laughs> we'll say i'm stepping in stepping yeah. in for dad no it's Wait, actually uh, to be honest it's been it's been um do you know what's been awesome is like like uae and jumbo have been awesome teams like seriously the big two biggest teams in the world arguably I mean, Enios, maybe you could chuck in that conversation. But the um, the welcome has been like, you know how like I feel, I, I compare it to this. When you go to work for like Deloitte or one of these big companies, you know, you, you could, you're a bit more dispensable. But when mm. you go to work yeah. with like, I'm hesitant so, to say family because I feel like this is the term that's overused all the time and it shits me. When everyone says, we are family, oh, family fighting together, and everyone preaches this whole like... Hang on. Hang on. I've got a special <laughs> guest. <laughs> yes. Hey, Dad. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> oh, sorry, you got me in a good time, mate. Eh? I was a bit late. So I've been doing some uh, merch pushing, you know. Merch pushing. <laughs> the nations well, we were just the... talking about so, that. So then I thought I'd come on and do a little bit more. Funny you yeah. mentioned that because we were just we were just weighing up. We basically we started a, a category called Daryl Limpy George Bennett. We're saying you guys are doing this. You, so you've retired. Firstly, congratulations. So oh, you've thanks. you you've retired and George is coming in. So we're calling it a direct swap. And we had three categories. Who's going to bring the most? Is George bringing more or less in three categories? Personality, physical capabilities, and no way. and results we decided that you scored because you only scored 12 uci points this year george is probably going to overtake you in that in the performance side of things the points getting side of things physical side of things we couldn't split it two different riders so we left at half a point each and in the personality side i kind of we went down the rabbit hole about like how punishing your social media content is and like how much you push your merch <laughs> and that uh, <laughs> If you if you know what the, you know what my you know what my theory is behind it, let me just get it all in now. But just push it a little bit more. Um, you know what the theory is behind it. If I don't wear it, then who else is going to wear it? It's like you with your hat on. Every time you take a photo with me, you point to your hat. You know, like that the other the other day the other day we played paddle and I gave him some Oaks wristbands, yeah. and he said, "Oh, let's take some let's take a picture for your merch." And I said, "Oh, that sounds like a good idea." And then I saw the photo afterwards, and he's pointing to his merch cap. So I mean, if anyone's going to push, if anyone's going to push on someone else's social media thing, it's the guy there with a the merch cap on his head. That's true. That's true. So, nah, um, we, we were just being facetious. We think that yeah. the, from the personality side of things, it's going to be a, again a pretty good direct swap. I'd say. Good Basically, party. it was just a character assassination of both of us, Daryl. Yeah. yeah. In a fun-loving way, though, because well, I love both of you. You know, we need a bit of personality in the team, so it's good. It's good to have like George there, you know. It's Because, uh, you know, sometimes we lack confidence in the team, so George is going to bring a lot of that. <laughs> so how's retirement treating you, Imps? How many – you just on the bees now, dad duties? Uh, What's going on? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, uh, I've been doing some other duties. We had to, it's actually a good time uh, I, I retired because we've had to sort out the house and 
sell some things off and you know before we leave so it's actually giving me some time jonesy to just kind yeah. of wind down a little bit um but Joe, i haven't actually stepped on a jet mate i have just uh been catching my breath really you know i came at jet lag i had all these things yeah. you know so and then the kids the yeah i mean you know how it is kids are always running amok so you don't get time to chill but i actually like you know the other day i was supposed to ride with lucas and i woke up and i actually thought to myself i had such a shit sleep i thought I actually don't need to go riding. Yeah. So then I just said, sorry, bud. I'm actually not going to come. <laughs> and it was like so nice not to have the guilt. You know, yeah. like the rest of the day, I didn't go, oh, I probably should have ridden a wide and a ride. Like, yes, you're lazy. I was just like, actually, yeah, you didn't feel like riding. So that's what it's about. So yeah. it, was, it was actually nice. And every time I've had a beer, it's funny because before I was having beers, before, before I'd retired, officially retired, I was having beers and I felt like I needed them. And then, like, now that I actually don't think I need them as much, and maybe because the pressure's off, I just feel like, oh, one's probably enough, you know? I don't even need, like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have another one. Like, I don't feel Do bad about it. It's just because, it, like, we live in, like, such extremes. It's like we have to do everything. You can't just do something in moderation, you know? It's like, yeah. oh, I can't just I can't just live, like, a normal – I have to do everything extreme. And that's also the bad things in your life. You have to do it in the extreme. And it's like – Oh, today's a today's a day I'm having off and I'm letting my hair down. So I'm really gonna let my hair down. I reckon yeah, it's like I, I think, also I, I, I think you just like you you kind of put like a thing on these days. You like kind of like think, wow, on Saturday and Sunday I'm off. So then if I'm gonna have a barbecue, oh gee, I might have two or three there because you know I deserve it. I've had a big week, or you know, you kind of like put like emphasis on those days, whereas now like you don't put any emphasis on just going to have a beer with someone. You kind of just like mm. I'm just going to yeah. catch up and have a beer. Uh, like, mm. what's, what's the big thing? But when you're riding a bike and you're trying to be a professional athlete, having a beer is actually a big thing, you mm. know, because you're like thinking, oh, it puts me on the back foot. And like, we're not talking one beer yet. Normally we have a beer, but it's like two or three, you know. So mm. it's, it's like, yeah, you put your, you know, like you're going to put yourself on the, you know, you're going to put yourself on the back foot for the next day. So, and then you're guilty the next day, and then you deal with that, and that then the, that night you're like shitty because you like shouldn't have done that, and then you get the guilt. Mm. And, uh, so, have you had a, um, a lot of years? To, you still got a lot of years, George, where you're going to feel guilty and like, yeah, I mean, it's oh yeah, no, it's good, but I, it's I've always got my theory of, I think I've I've told the boys about this is where you lean in and you create as many demons as you can, and uh, in the four weeks you have off the bike, and you you get to the point where you just have to punish yourself by living like a monk and. It's all about it's all about this flow and ebb of demons where you create as many as you can and then you spend a long time sort of exercising those demons from you later on. Mm. Um, yeah. I don't I don't want you to go too deep into it, Daryl, because I think that people should go across to even though I was taking the piss out of your social media, it's good. Uh, people should go across to your YouTube channel and watch your latest video of your of your final your final race. So you don't have to say too much on this show because people should watch it there. But just talk us a little bit through that last. Mm. that last race i mean we could everyone could see you were pretty emotional but i think it was really cool that the team as well that was there in montreal and quebec with you they made a real they put they actually speaking of emphasis they put some emphasis on the fact that you were retiring and they made it a mm. bit of a, a deal you know and the team was still ultimately trying to win the, the race as well but it was never at the expense of like making you feel like hey mate thanks for fucking everything you brought to this team thanks for everything you brought to the sport before you came to this team and actually made a bit of a deal of it. I thought that was, mm. that was actually pretty right. cool. Yeah. I thought, you know, I, I, uh, I didn't know what was going to happen or whatever, but I, and obviously I wasn't going to say, oh, geez, I expect something to be done, but, um, yeah, I, you know, just that day that you guys surprised me with the, you know, everyone had the thanks dad's t-shirts and then we had the team meeting. It was like special, you know, it was just all uh, unexpected. I thought oh, I'd be nice if someone did something, but I didn't really want to, run it myself and say, oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. I kind of was just like, oh, you know, just you kind of going there for the race and you're like, you hope that you do get a nice send-off, you know. So it was really nice to have the team do such a great job. Like, I mean, everyone made me feel so happy and so like – and also just realize what you've done, you know. Like a lot of guys are saying like what you've brought to the sport, what you've brought to other teams. What there it is. Just, that's it. He's got the shirt on. That's it. Those are the shirts you should be selling. Those man. shirts are great. Okay. Good, they're good. Really good. But, the, but that gesture, like, as you said, like, you don't want to be leading that, but just the gesture like that is uh, is fantastic. No, you know, like, Jonesy, like, for me, the, the thing was, like, um, yeah, you want to, you, you feel like you deserve a send-off, but you, you also realize you're not, you know, Alejandro Valverde or anyone like that, you know, you're not, you, I'm not a prolific 
uh, race winner that expects like the whole peloton to clap me through the line and things like that. It's, I mean, those kind of guys, they got that reception and I never expected that. But what I got for myself out of it was was perfect. Like I got the I got the dream ending when I came back and I was like, oh, how was I? I was like, man, I got the perfect send off. Like I ended it off on my terms. I could ride the front. I was nervous. It was wet and like I could dish out pain as much as I could and until I couldn't anymore. Um, and I could end exactly the way I wanted. Like sure, I would have loved to have raised my hands and say I've won the race. But like mm. the, the, just the, just the the thing to ride around that last lap even by myself and then stop <laughs> and have a beer with one of the fans. And yeah, like, that was just that was just cool, yeah. you know. And like, when I said That's to him, right. "Hey, should I should I should I down it?" You know, and he was like, "You're gonna down that now?" I was like, "Ah, oh, I think I am." So then I just did it, and that was cool. <laughs> like, you know, like I, I and you can't yeah, script that awesome. kind of stuff. You, yeah, you connect to the fans. You go. That's why I think like, when I came across the line, I was like so emotional because I know. And coming across the line there was like, and even the Daryl, Daryl, it was just like. I kind of like soaked it all up and I was like, you know, this is the last time I'm going to race at this level with these kind of guys at the top level of the sports. I've chosen to go out. And then you think about the, your family and all the sacrifices they've made and you've made and everyone's made. And you go, we've come a long way to get to this point, you know, like you, all your friends are there. It was like great to have Bill's there, like a real close friend, you know, that's like been there, done it with me for so many years. You know, even Clark at the finish line there was just like, yeah, oh, it was it was nice, you know. It was I mean I would have loved my family to have been there, but um, you know, at the end of it all, it's yeah, yeah you, all those emotions and all those years of sacrifice just come into one moment. And, yeah, yeah. And it's great to feel the impact you've made. You know, a lot of riders were patting me on the back when I was coming through the peloton. Mm. You know, that's nice. You know, you're coming out yeah. the horse, you're suffering and everything and guys are going, make great job, back, like, enjoy it, you know, like they know you're done. But it's so good. And like the the p- people talk about the fairy tale ending in sport. Like in New Zealand, we call it the Richie McCaw ending, where he basically retired from the All Blacks, lifting up the World Cup. You know, uh, and yeah. man, that doesn't exist for many people at all. That exists like yeah. maybe for the one percent of greats. Yeah. Like it didn't even exist for Michael Jordan. You know, it like only yeah. exists for like a real, real small amount of people. And the rest of us, like if you can go out, if you can stop your career number one on your terms when you wanted to finish. At the race you chose to finish it at, number two, not in a fucking wheelchair or on crutches, mm. and with the people around you that you want to be around you to a to 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 a degree. Like obviously, you would have liked your family to be there, and they could, but they couldn't be there. But still, to be around the people that you wanted to be there, finish when you wanted to finish, and finish healthy, like. And with the admiration of the people that were there, like the whole peloton feels the same, but there's only 150 people in that race. They all mm. give you a pat on the back. Actually, you can't really ask for any more in this sport no. because the reality is that you, it's maybe Valverde to some degree, but ultimately no one, or well, maybe Lance, I guess, but like people don't finish winning, you know? I don't people think don't he got the was expecting that. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. But do, do you know what's crazy with this is like how many guys go out with – a phone call from their manager in December saying, sorry, mate, mm. it, they said it's a no, you know, they're not going to take you on. And that's how so many guys finish their career and go, Fuck. majority. Yeah. Um, yeah. Harry Borge was my last race. And I know, you know, they didn't even get to accelerate it. They didn't know. They just don't get signed to the next year. They're done. See you later. And it's no like, t-shirts, nothing. Nah, no, no t-shirts. That must be hard. Eh? That must be, hard. It must yeah, be that must really be hard. hard. But the other thing on this that um, someone once told me, I can't remember what it was. He said like, the most important thing in cycling for them was they were saying it's like not results, but it's to like earn the respect of your peers. So like don't give a shit about what the public is speaking, what the, you know, the UCI points, all the shit. The main thing is that the people that you race against are like, fuck me, that guy's a good rider because they're the only ones that see. They're the only ones that see like the guys that are good that aren't the, aren't the winners as well. So if you can finish with, like you say, the whole peloton going, mate, unreal job. That was mm. – that's something yeah. where you've gone well the peloton in the eyes of the peloton i was one of the best riders more so okay the public knew i was good i was you know i was, had the yellow jersey i won the stage in the door but like the for sure the peloton thought would rank you higher as a rider than the say the general public in terms of you know what mm. they what they saw when they race against you so i feel like that measure is a is, a, is quite a good like yardstick of like was I a good rider or not? 
but it's not even about whether you're a good rider or not. I reckon or like, good it teammate, is, a good but like yeah, you're... good teammate. It's like the legacy. Okay, a big word again, legacy. But essentially, like anyone who has a long career in any sport, they leave some sort of legacy behind, and that legacy can be measured in so many different ways. It can be measured by by winning. 10 grand tours or it can be measured by by like what you brought to an environment what you brought to a team what you brought to the sport as a whole i mean in daryl's situation coming from some from south africa like wearing the yellow jersey all that stuff like that's the legacy you leave behind and even deeper than that and more importantly that is like the, the people you meet the rela- relationships you create and when you stop your career and you might you might go you move to australia at the end of the year and you might not see some of these people for a long time but like those people, they won't say, "Oh, Daryl Limpy was a good rider." They'll say, "Daryl Limpy was a good bastard." You know, that, yeah. that's like that's the legacy that people leave yeah. behind. Unless you're this fucking top top winner, because those top top winners, the legacy they leave behind is like he was a good rider. He wasn't necessarily a good guy. <laughs> so it's two different measures. <laughs> what you know? would you rather, a good rider or a good that. bastard? I think there's a good. I think there's a t-shirt for that, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what happened to that t-shirt? Did it, did you sell out and not make any more? Or what? We sold them. Yeah. Well, sold, yeah, we need out. to chase that up. We need to get that spreadsheet. We we sold all the t-shirts. Um, there's still some hats left, but the mm. t-shirts sold. But we should do another run of t-shirts. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, Daryl, maybe, maybe the oak should make them, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just push it up there. Just pushing it up there. Yeah, you know, and okay. uh, yeah, I think there's so many things to retiring, and, and I don't think anyone will ever prepare you because. It's it's like having children. No one can prepare you for having kids. But it's like you you stop and you think you'll be okay, and you also think in your head like I'll have all these jobs, and I you know I'll work there, and I'll probably do this, and I'll get into commentary, and then I'll do I'll do some training, I'll do some coaching. But now actually, when you stop, when you stop, and then you actually go, I've actually put all these thoughts that I thought I was going to do into action and process, and then and and go through that whole process. Then it becomes a different ball game, you know. Then it becomes a different way of thinking, and like oh, okay, hold on, I'm actually going to do that all. It's actually not so easy to do as I thought, you know, and the reality does hit in. So I think you've really got to be ready to retire. You've really got to be in a good headspace. I think if you don't get that opportunity to do it, then that's what George is saying. Like if you know, oh, actually, if I don't have a job by January, uh, I'm in trouble, you know, like, you know, if you haven't saved up and you haven't thought, okay, I might need some time to get through it or, uh, you know, to work around it and it's sprung up on you, I think it must be super difficult. So, yeah. To be honest, it's actually something that scares the best piece of advice. The the best piece of advice. Sorry, George, because this will will maybe go on what you're going to say as well. George is better than I have fears, and you cut him off. No, his fear is retiring you. But the biggest piece piece of advice. (laughs) The best piece of advice I got when I was retiring was from my uncle, actually, because I I was fucking scared as well. I was like, like, you spent your whole life cycling, and then you stop it at. 35 years old at my in my instance and you're like now i've got to start to do what everybody else did when they were 20 and went to university and figure out what am i going to do for the rest of my life what's what am i going to do now until i get to 65 when i can retire and he said why the fuck do you think like that he said if you think about what you're going to do for the rest of your life you are closing so many doors he's like you're coming from a, a, a part of the world where you're very like in a luxury position where you bring some new perspective different perspective he said don't think about what you're gonna do for the rest of your life think about what you want to do for the next couple of years or like yeah. five years yeah. five years max Great don't advice. go more than five years because if you think i'm going to do this for 20 years or 30 years you're just going to close so many doors just yeah. see what comes in the next few years and do that if you like it you carry on if you don't like it you do something else see i just see it as this big dark cloud hanging up over there like a midlife crisis just waiting for me mm. whispering at me you know like Shh, yeah you'll on, struggle it's good. <laughs> hey, before before we let you go, Daz, um, just a random topic. We've talked about on the show once before about how blokes we traditionally never throw away underwear. Like I've got pairs of jocks in that fucking cupboard there that I reckon I've had since I was 18. They got holes in, but blokes were programmed not to do it. The other thing is with circulation of shirts. There's a there's like a top layer in your chest of drawers of shirts that are in the top rotation. But today I thought, no, I'm gonna start fucking digging. And I, I went to dig and found like the old DOS Kiwis, which I, I don't know how it went to the bottom, but now that's in the top rotation. Uh what's your general rotation now that you've got all these V leckers? Do you just rip open new shirts like do, every day or do, how do you get your no, rotation of shirts no, going? No, I try, I, tr- I try not to wear it too much, you know, Jonesy, just on when I'm socially um, 
visible, you know, the yeah, yeah, lacquer yeah. stuff. Um, but uh, no, it was funny the other day, you know, I make these shirts, they're also duas. So, like, duas can be like a bit of a funny word. It's like, you know, if you're South African, you know, duas is a box, but, you know, it's a bit more than, it can go further than that. I won't elaborate. But anyway, if you call someone a duas, it's a bad thing. So, but I have these shirts. Anyway, and I was in town and I wore it. I thought no one will actually know. And this guy came up to me and was, hey, man, be lacquer, man. And I was like, yeah, cool. And he goes, yeah, I can have a photo with you. I was like, sure, man. And he had a photo with me. And it's like, just dress. So I was just like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. myself, okay. But anyway, well, he doesn't understand. But, uh, but you know, it's quite, it's quite funny. I mean, um, yeah, it, it's one of those. It actually was my best sellout shirt. But um, yeah, uh, the, the other part, the other, the, the other to, to to go back now. It's like I, I think my shirts are going to have to change because I'm going to change size as well. So um, I think all those shirts that are there are probably just going to be pulled out the cupboard, and I'm going to have to get a new wardrobe because. Already, already, I feel like I, I need to like, and actually, the new, the new uh, style now is just like you know oversized. So like all my shirts are, but and then I need to come back with the times because I feel like I'm young, I'm too old now. You know, when I was walking around with Corbin, he's like, "Oh, your shirts are quite tight and quite small." And I was like, "It's a normal shirt." And I was like, looked at him and I thought, maybe I need to. So like the other day, I went to Zara with Alice, and we, she was looking for a dress and things and whatever. I bought myself my first oversized shirt. So now, I, brother, I'm going to walk around town with my tracky pants and my white shoes and then my oversized shirt. I think that basically what I can gather, the style is to try and look as shit as you can. I think it's just trying to look like you've, you've, you've not tried at all. You know what I mean? I think that's the go. It's like it's like caps. Like I, I always thought, like a nice pristine cap with like a cool, either like a flat peak or like just it just looks nice and like in shape. You know. And now I've looked around and all these people are wearing these like dad hats that are like all crimpled and shit. And I'm like, well, look at oh, Jonesy's like, head on his head. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it's just exactly. fresh it out of the ocean. Baggy green, mate. <laughs> what Why are you even Jonesy sweating used, so much? Jonesy used <laughs> right. to have a, which cap was it, Jonesy? You used to have oh, one. Oh, yeah, the green edge one. It was like an Orica green edge one. Oh, that yeah. Blue one. White. That blue yeah. one you used to wear to every race. That's right. <laughs> that one white. had some stories to tell, eh? Oh, mate. Yeah, yeah. It was actually nearly like an Orica yeah. green edge heirloom, like. Oh yeah. yeah, it was fucked in the end. It was it was cooked. Mm. Uh, yeah. Well, so, it's nice to have you on. Thanks for popping in, Des. Thanks for doing hey, some thanks. podcast fishing, Jonesy. And hey, uh, Daryl, uh, don't thanks, eh? don't listen to the first half of this episode because the yeah, no, no, the the, 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 the kind of the uh, sentiment kind of changed when she came on. <laughs> I said, I said, okay. just, go, <laughs> do you want me to go podcast fish? I'll get Daz on, and the reaction was nah, nah. Nah, we'll get him on in a couple of weeks. <laughs> we'll have a chat to him. And then, okay. then when he comes on, he's like, hey, how are you, mate? Yeah, great to have you on. <laughs> Who face? Well, it's always good to be on you guys. It's always good to see you all together. So it's, it's good. It. And yeah. for Just those like listening, make sure you go to uh, Daryl's YouTube channel. What is it? Just Daryl Impey on YouTube. Uh, actually, I actually haven't finished. All the, I'm at a point where you're supposed to like, Give it a name, and I actually don't know what to call it. So I, I guess if you just type Daryl Impin, it'll come up. But Joe, I don't have like go a channel check out his, name. It's still like a long thing. Go check out his last video of his last race. Go and buy some. We'll put the. We'll yeah, like we do always. Daryl, we'll put the link for your merchant to the description. Thanks, mate. Yep. Appreciate it, guys. Out. And we'll see. We'll see you tomorrow in your retirement. Uh, two days time in your retirement ride. That's it. That's it. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, are you throwing a big retirement bash a la Bewley style? <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. Like, it's like I'm going to do like a little ride and then yep. um, and then I'll probably do a dinner as well. So, yeah, going to do dinner and ride and everything else, you know. Nice. Just take it as it comes, Jonesy, you know, just um, hang out with the boys, you know, and then – well, we do get a lot them. of Girona cyclists that listen to this and there'll be a few that are riding now going, fuck, I didn't get an invite to that. That must have been three days ago. <laughs> no, I've seen the WhatsApp. You know, I've seen the WhatsApp chat. Everyone's invited. Okay. <laughs> exactly. And you know what? Some of the guys that maybe aren't on is because we just don't see each other and that's yeah, just yeah. normal. Like I don't get invited to their parties and it's just luck. You know, yeah, so. but you're trying to sell them merch now so you need to invite everyone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No. Yeah. Good stuff, you know, mate. you have to. You you also want to keep it a bit intimate, and you know, Jonesy, you don't mm. want to get a peloton. You know, well, like, we're going to throw a retire. We'll throw a retirement party for you when you're out in Australia. I'll uh, I'll get That's Jerry it. Ryan to tee it up. So we'll drink we'll nice red. Down. And... We'll do it down under. Yep. Uh, get the boys together. It, 
intimate, Daryl, we'll do an intimate function with all your green edge mates and uh, That's we'll it. drink the finest Mitchelton red. Hey, even, don't worry. Even green edge gave a nice post. Eh? I will say that. Like, that was also yeah. special. Like, you know, I wasn't in their team for the last three years, but then they actually like also gave a sweet post. So that was cool. Mm. They didn't even do a post to me when I retired when I was in the team. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Internally, I, I saw that. I was like, internally, the they knew it was his last race, but externally, <laughs> yeah. just like get him out the door. <laughs> yeah. 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 Talk about that. You're part of that oh oh. No, actually, you're not part of the oh oh one percent. You're part of the majority of guys that get the Ravi Shastri. Me? Oh yeah. I I, yeah. I I didn't know it was my last race until about six hours before it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you said, "Oh, can I write?" Nope. You're out, mate. Okay. <laughs> Sweet. You know what I just realized is that I said Bills was actually at Canada. That's how like that's how emotional I actually was. He actually wasn't even at Canada. But you know I why I felt yeah. like he was at Canada? Because they actually him and Hannah actually organized a thing with my wife and them to come and be with ours while I was watching the what while they were watching the race. So that was cool. So that I've actually felt like all my Girona mates, George was there too. Like they were all part of it. So even though they weren't there on the day, you know. So thanks for that, eh? No, you'll have to listen to the first half of the show because they've already talked about that, mate. Okay, well, I mean, I'm just backing him up then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go on, you imps. Right. Oh, good on, you imps. Cool. You're a legend, mate. Thanks for having me, guys. No drama. See you later. See you, mate. See you. Okay. See you, mate. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Daryl, oh, well, what a legend. Better. We were going to talk about George. We'll talk, we'll, do, we'll talk about you joining the team in two weeks' time, so tune into that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're going to need to stretch well to that. Um. I gotta go. I gotta, I've got to go. I've got to go real soon. I've got a meeting in twelve minutes. Yeah, yeah shit. It's not I don't know. I don't really want to talk about the welter. I got welter fatigue. I'm sick of it. Mm. I'm so cracked on it because because actually it was a shit race in terms of once Remco was out of the GC, and and so what that meant was everyone just really honed in on the whole Jumbo Visma internal politics. Yeah, because there was no real racing. You know, it was yeah. it was obviously it was super hard, but like. When you got a team dominating one, two, three, it kind of sucks the life out of it a little bit. After Remco was was out on that one day, and then um, it kind of just meant that everyone sort of just got on the the Jumbo Visma hate wagon, and it kind of I don't know. I kind of feel like well, a positive light out of what was Caden Groves, man yep. of the show. Mm. He got he's he's rocking a merch hat somewhere, Bills. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was unreal. Um, it's interesting that that Yumbo Visma situation, though. Just quickly, is I was talking to, to someone about it yesterday, and we all we all have our, our views and our opinions. And obviously, social media was was uh, going going crazy for a couple of days there. But what's interesting for me is that nobody, nobody except those eight riders and those two or three sports directors actually know what the conversation was, what the agreement was, what the plan was. No one else knows, you know? And I've got a pretty good idea. You can, you, yeah, but you can, we all have a pretty good idea because of when you watch the race. We, we talked about in the last show, you've got to have the mongrel or your soft cock. They don't win grand tours by being soft cocks. They've got that mongrel. And we saw I, the I mongrel the, come out. I sat on the fence with it a little bit. Like I, and I think I'm probably like, a bit of an outlier with it, but I think ultimately they did the right thing, and they they gave they gave shouldn't say that they they supported Set to win the Vuelta. At the same time, I can see why you go to a race and Set wasn't the leader initially, and one of the leaders there, Jonas, was categorically the the best rider in that race. If he wanted to win the Vuelta from a physical standpoint, he would have won the Vuelta. And he, so I can understand that side of it a little bit, but then once it got towards the end of the third week, at that point, I was like, okay, now it's time to support the guy who supported you. Mm. And ultimately, they did it. They may, they, did. They, they may not have done it in the way that the, the public eye wanted it to happen, but they did it. So I'm actually all right with it. Oh, of course. I mean, also, also, like the whole thing is, they are now at a point where they can just say to everybody, shut the fuck up. We went one, two, three. We're yeah, a performance based yeah. team. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, exactly. The only, the only thing that, like I was just saying before, we've got Daryl on, the only thing I'm getting a little bit of fatigue on, and this is across every team, 
is the whole family chat. The yeah. whole we are family, we are mm. because let's not let's just call it what it is. It's pro sport. Yeah. And and that's okay. Yeah. It can be pro sport. It can be it's a high level, it's a ruthless like we just talked about, guys don't get jobs when they've got a family to feed and they've been a loyal servant of a team for ten years. Guys business. don't get you know, it ultimately business and yeah. So and that's absolutely fine and I don't have a problem with it. And I just get a little bit of this fatigue on family. We are, you know, and many teams are guilty of this when I know that there's this internal friction and, and, and it's sold as like that the public want this message of family. I don't look at it and go, oh, those guys are great. They're all family. And it's it's hashtag whatever. Let's say the jumbo one, Samovin and or ride together or hashtag whatever. I don't feel like that adds anything going, we are family, we are brothers in arms or brothers and whatever the Bora one is. So why not just go like, why Why not own it a little bit more, lean into the fact mm. that this is cutthroat, this is top level. I mean, so if instead of, instead of the it, hashtag Wolfpack, it should just be hashtag, today we're going all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, you imagine if, if one tried to sell that, like that, um, uh, who was the, the famous rivalry with um, Groshon and Magnus, um, on the Haas team, they fucking oh, yeah. hated oh, each other. Yeah, Magnuson. Yeah, yeah. Magnuson. Yeah. And, and, and imagine if they, and they the were... The boss is always like, stressed. The guy that got it. What the fuck? Imagine if they we were like, uh, sort the shit out. We are family. <laughs> you're just like, no, you're not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And there's yeah. nothing wrong with creating a good environment. But... Yeah. But it, it needs to be a high performing shit. environment as well. But I, yeah. I just think like, there should be a little ban on the word family in social media. Yeah, around teams that have got multiple mm. guys racing. So what's the word then you can replace it with instead of family? Fighters. More real- Dogs. Fighters. Mongrels. Dogs. Pack yeah. of mongrels fucking going Pack at of, it. Yeah. <laughs> Pack of wild, yeah, untamed animals. Brumbies. All right, we'll get those yeah. t-shirts done then. Big, just uh, a t-shirt that say Big Dog Got to Eat. Big Dog <laughs> Got to Eat. <laughs> just woof. I just t-shirt says woof on it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Good stuff. All well, right. good show. Thanks to Daryl Limpy for his uh, podcast. Yeah. Fish. We I like... hope he doesn't listen to that first half of a day. Ooh, yeah, I think he nah, will. He 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 he, he won't. It. Nah, he won't. He won't. He's got too much on next couple of yeah. days. But yeah. yeah, I was just joking. Obviously, yeah. But... Just... Why am I fucking explaining myself to you guys? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, nah, we're all family. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wild dogs. All right. All right. See ya. All right. See ya. <laughs>